welcome back to the whatnots reactor core number 125 we are here to talk about episode three and four of marvel's secret invasion and if you're like wait you, you were supposed to do that last week, but you never did. What happened? Uh, we decided to switch things up a little bit and uh, combine episodes three and four for this time and five and six in two weeks time. So yeah. no more every single week, uh, but every uh, uh, other week for these next two. Um, it's yeah. a busy summer for things to react to. We're like, can we oh God, consolidate so this a little bit? There's so much. My name is Kyle yeah. Springer. I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are you? That's true. I'm doing all right. How is your evening? So far, so good. I made an okay dinner. Didn't turn out exactly how I, I, I planned it, but it wasn't bad. So I was okay. satisfied. <laughs> Sufficient. It's been a good night. Sufficient. Yes. Sufficient meal. <laughs> Sometimes that's just what you need. You know, a sufficient mail to get you through. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Let's let's start talking about secret invasion here. We, we are combining three and four. Melissa, how did you feel about uh, these two sandwiched together here? These don't these left us in an interesting place. Stakes are pretty dire in a way that I wasn't exactly expecting them to be. Not that I'm the viewer who has very specific theories mapped out and predicts sure. what the narrative structure is going to be exactly like, well, we're going to have this by this episode, except for our standard penultimate episode of a Marvel Disney plus series where we get all the flashbacks. Maybe one for that <laughs> next week. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I, I, I think these two episodes work much better together as a package um, which is partly why we decided to squish these together. I have to say, episode three by itself was kind of disappointing for me. Um, I, I, I think the first episode of the show got me really excited. And while things kind of started to slow down a little bit in episode two, in episode three, they kind of came to a screeching halt for me. Um, largely found myself just uninterested with what they were doing. Um, the, the conversations they were ha having did not seem to have like as much meat on the b b b bones as, uh, what we got in the first two. Um, but I have to say I liked episode four quite a bit. Um, I, I'm, I, I think I'm on, I'm at a place with this show that I feel like I'm right on the edge and the show can still kind of mm. go either way, but I'm still, I think mostly positive. Um, the only thing that I'm struggling with is, is what exactly is the end game of this show? Mm -hmm. What, what, what is true? What is the outcome going to kind of look like? And I, I don't think I know that just yet. Um, and I hope the show knows that because I know there's been a couple other Marvel shows that it just didn't seem like they really knew what the ending was. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited to see. We have two more episodes left, so I think they have time to to tell mm. the story that they want. Um, but 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 yeah, I, I I liked these two as a package. I, I, I think it worked out well like that um melissa we got our first official the, the, they said it super squirrel in episode True. three we get graphic being like yes we are making super scrolls um and then in episode four we kind of get to see him a little bit more do I, I, I guess we get some of the extremist stuff in episode yeah. three um but what did you think about uh these super scrolls when he makes the Groot branches come out of his arm, I'm a big fan of Groot. Always happy to see more of the, the Groot energy around. I root. I was for a Groot. little disappointed that it was <laughs> just like Groot and not a graphic adaptation of Groot. Like he didn't have like flesh. Yeah, not like, like a green he says, like, alien <laughs> tentacle thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like flesh and bones and muscles, just like the corporeal. I was about to say human. And I'm like, well, it could look like 
scroll or it could look like a human disguise, whatever form he's into, however graphic feels. Right. But then, like, I mean, they are shaped. I thought that would have been right? fun. And they have that like <laughs> yeah. that like scaly, purpley glow when they like shift on on mm-hmm. on on things. So it could have had that effect, but no, it just looked like plain old group. Yep, just regular. Which I want to know what else he can do with it. Like, you remember when Groot just, like, makes a flower for a little kid? I want to know if right, Gavin yeah. can do that. Can, can he, can like, he make, make a big, big branch shield? Wins? Yeah. Yeah. Get creative <laughs> with it. Who knows? Yeah, did, did you ever sit in the field? I'm not sure what plant it was exactly, but those things you, like, wrapped the stem around the bulb and then you could pull it back and they would pop off. Could 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 he could he make like a wooden gun that just like shoots those things out there with like little mm. plant things that pop, 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 pop. Mm-hmm. who knows? Who knows? Yeah, what well, can he grow? Can he grow flowers from Scrollos? Is that like in his DNA somehow? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it'll be interesting to see because we've really only seen um the extremists and now Groot. But we also had that like frost giant animal thing, um, mm. which we, ha- we haven't seen him use that yet. And I forget what else was in the Call obsidian. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I, I, I want to see a, a, a grander display of powers uh, on, on, you know, in in the finale or in some big fight here. Um but uh, we, we do get to see extremists uh, not only on Gravik, but kind of the big reveal in between episodes uh, three and four here is that Gaia gets shot at the end of episode three. You think she's dead, dead, dead. She, re- she re- reverts back to her scroll form. Uh, but then at the start of episode four, nope, she's alive. She has extremists. Turns out she... Mm-hmm sucked the memory out of the scientist doctor to know how to use all of the machinery and and stuff like that and she she souped herself up um at at, at least with the extremists i'm not yeah. sure if, if that's all she has or not or if that's the process do you have to do, do it yeah. four times or however like once yeah. for each power um or mm-hmm. is it just a one-time thing um were 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 you, were you kind of expecting that to happen? I I probably it was it was on the table. It was her that found the uh, super scroll program with the ability to have extremists and to heal her instead of another character. So I figured that element would be in play for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. It's it's one that I felt like she was one of the actors that the show was touting as like, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. we have Amelia Clark in, in the show, whereas Colby Smulders, like not as much out there for press and stuff. So mm-hmm. when 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 she died in episode one, I was like, ah, I can see see why she's not really a part of the show. So when they killed off Gaia in the JS one, I was like, well, she didn't really do anything. I was like, but they were wheeling her out for the press for that. That doesn't seem right. So, yeah, it it made sense to me. I was like, I bet you she's not dead because she was sneaking around all 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 that time. Um, And she had as she was trying to get the code, the, the code to stop the nuke. In episode three, she had this bit where she almost looks in the camera, but is looking at the person Mm. next to her and has this kind of moment of realization. Like she realizes something. She has an like a spark, an idea in 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 her head, but they don't show exactly what it is. Um, And so I I think that was also a a big clue as like, yeah, she's not dead. She's up to something here. Um, So. Good stuff with that. Uh, we have we have some some strained interactions between Fury and Talos uh, while mm-hmm. they are chasing down this this g- g- guy who's about to head off a, a, a nuke. How, how did you feel about their inter- interactions? Like I said, and I think our first episode, I like that a lot of the show is just about these 
adult men, older men being friends with each other. And even if they are arguing, if there is conflict between them, I still like the weight that the show places on the relationship between them. And and even if it has fallen apart, the fact that it was there at all, that they did have this bond and what they owe to each other. Like Talos bringing out that he and his fellow scrolls have fed Nick Fury so much information, done so many tasks for him over the last like 30 years that they're a big reason why Nick Fury is the Nick Fury we know today. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I think between him, at, like when they're about to infiltrate the or it might be right after uh regards Nick says to 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 him like. I I understand or he, he said something along the lines of like, thanks for coming along. But I, I, I understand why, like you, you still agree with Gravik, even though you're not on his side mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to which Talos kind of corrects him. He's like, it's not it's not that I, I like it's it's not that I agree with G- Gravik. He's like, I'm not with him because I'm with you. Um. Yeah. And I on 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 one hand, I really, really lo- loved that that interaction. I, I think there's a sense of loyalty that Talos has to Fury and what he he did for him and his family um, that I, I don't know if he f- feels like he can r- 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 repay. And I think that's why there mm. is this sh- this strain between them of like, yeah. I feel like I, I still need to help you. And do all of this stuff, but also it's been thirty years. Yeah. But also, I want to help you, but like, ah, right. Um, I. But I do like that. That is Talos's ultimate. His not just his strategy that makes it sound more calculating, but just his own personal work ethic. Almost like sure. I will just keep trying. If I try and try and try, if I am there, I am present. I am loyal. I am helpful. I will be helped in return. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I like he, that he, he doesn't has, give up on that. Right. I, I, I think there is at, at the very least some respect that needs to be, mm-hmm. you, you know, put to, to, towards him. Uh, but the conversation he has with Gaia and her, she's kind of been on the fence after learning that Gravik potentially killed her mom Soren, we don't exactly know what happened off screen, so we we really just have Talos's word that that happened. Um, but also, like, she's trying to see things the way her father d- does, and she just can't by the end of that conversation. And she feels like like that may have been the right action to take for a certain amount of time, but that time has expired. Sure. At like you, mm-hmm. you're like it like your way of thinking is this older way that's not really going to get anything done. And it if it was, we had 30 years to make that happen and nothing happened. Um, and so she's she's still like, I, I don't know if she's really for Gravik at this point or if she's on his side, but also just can't see eye to eye with her dad um Mm -hmm. and it it, to be honest it 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 made me feel more for her and be like yeah talos you old old fogey well get get with the times dude like what's Mm -hmm. up with this um so yeah like it's it's I, i like the complicated series of relationships that they're they're in in here and and just the 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 tough spots that it it puts them all in um Yeah, and they really just have Nick Fury to go through to sort of advocate for them. Fury and Hill, and uh, it seems like Rhodey knew about Skrulls in sort of a top-secret intelligence way. I'm not sure if there were other people Fury went to besides Hill, who he said, there's this group of alien refugees here on Earth. I work with them. They're helpful. They're peaceful. Ultimately, I want to get them recognized and have a real home here. Like, I don't know if there's anybody else who was working with him who like the uh, Talos or anybody else could turn to at this time. Like things aren't quite working at the speed we want with Fury. Can you try something? Yeah. Well, I, I think the thing with Rhodey is 
I it, like because at the end of episode three, we basically he's also a a scroll. We don't see it. Yeah. But we hear his vo- voice it's on definitely the f- him. phone. Yes, it's very absolutely distinctive him. voice of Don Cheadle. And it's just like, oh, he's playing both sides or something. Um, and it, then again, we see him in episode four here, and it he very obviously is. A scroll. We see the scroll woman in the shower. She steps out. She wipes the the mirror, and she's turned into him. And something I just thought about was even like I like how how much does Talos know about where Mm -hmm. all of these scrolls are and what positions they're in? If if he's not keep track of a million people. Exactly. If he's not saying eye to eye with Gravik, where has Gravik placed people that Talos doesn't know about? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I I can even see him going to who he thinks is Rowdy um, mm. and and not really knowing that it's a scroll. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, at the end of the day, here is the scroll that's working against him, even though he thinks he's like, but we're like, we're kind of on the same t- team, right? Avengers for life, dude, right? Yeah, you remember? <laughs> at the Something that one I've time, been wondering you know? about. I don't think this is the situation where it's happening, but we've seen that uh, Nick Fury and Maria Hill had scroll counterparts. We don't see as much of it between Soren and Maria Hill, but we imagine it can be the same relationship that uh, Nick Fury and and Talos have, where it's like, I I (laughs) permit you to pretend to be me when it serves my purposes. And we don't know that there's not any other human who has figured that out and reached out to a scroll and made that same arrangement. Like, Mm. I'll do something for you and you pretend to be me for whatever these reasons might be. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that is the, the thing. I think there is it, it just a large number of scrolls out there and it's not mm-hmm. only gotten out of hand for, for fury, but for Talos. And I, I, I think once he finds out that Rhodey is also a scroll, I think that might be one of the thing though. His, his story seems to be more focused on his relationship with his daughter and Mm -hmm. and the way she sees him and and stuff like that but i can imagine him right finding out that someone like Rhodey is a scroll and just being like oh shit this is worse than i thought right this is this is not yeah i i can't just be like please help i helped out that one time please help me um so yeah there's some some interesting stuff there um but I did also want to spend some time on Fury and his wife, because I think they Mm -hmm. have some of the better scenes here in episode four. Um, I was fascinated by all of the the stuff that you got to to learn about them. Um, Tell me your thoughts on their relationship and all the stuff that happened between them. Uh, It's been nice to visit them at different points in time in these very specific circumstances i like the motif of them meeting uh in a bar or coffee shop or cafe or something i wonder if we're gonna get a third beat of that in the next episode like i said we've got the pattern from like wandavision and moon knight that the penultimate episode of the marvel show is a big flashback that contextualizes a bunch of stuff for you so who knows if we're in for a little bit more of that next week? Yeah, we might get her side of, of things of how she went yeah. from like, here's Gravik, like he can help you help you to mm. seemingly being on her on 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 Fury's side and feeding him information about the, the red room for the Black Widow stuff to mm. then, yeah, being a double agent and actually working for Gravik. Yeah, and being not just together, but married. I'd like to see, uh, was that a courthouse wedding? Was that a, a human ceremony, a scroll ceremony? Who was there? Who knows that they're they're married? How many people? I, I have a lot of, when did it happen? Who was invited? Was what Maria there? What did their bachelor there? parties <laughs> look like? Right. Did they you get a scroll stripper? <laughs> what what happens? <laughs> they, they, they're there. <laughs> they don't 
physically take off their clothes, but they can morph clothes on and off of their body. Boom, you're looking for this. Oh, why is it Rhodey? Oh, come on, man. What it is. <laughs> great. I bet he's fun at parties. I have questions about things like that. Um, yeah. One element that I really like that they introduced, even just briefly, is Priscilla talking about taking the identity from a specific human woman that's Dr. Yeah. Priscilla Davis. And it's not quite clear under what circumstances they met who she was pretending to be before she was pretending to be Priscilla Davis. But I like that there was a conversation where she approached this dying woman, explained her situation. You know, who knows how much she might have known about that beforehand. We don't know who this woman was. Maybe she was a doctor that was part of S.H.I.E.L.D. or some government agency or something. It seems like she but, was working on uh, there, there was one of like, I forget if it n- oh, n- yes. rock stars had had a, yes. a, a great e- Easter egg thing. But that doctor was working on understanding the like superhuman gene, uh, which is probably yeah. why like it was yes. strategic to like, let's go talk mm. with her. Let's be f- f- around her at the vi- very least, if not kidnap her and stuff like that and then i think when they found out she was dying they were like well we don't really need to kidnap her we can just kind of replace her um but yeah, I, I don't I think and it like, is also i don't know one of those like but i also kind of like her i fell in love with her to a certain yeah. degree not in a romantic mm. sense but like yeah, she just, was I genuinely a good woman. person yes. yeah yeah and we don't know if that was something uh the, 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 the scroll who would be Priscilla went there to do on orders if this was her own plan exactly how it was all arranged but I do like the concept of if I'm going to take over this woman's life I'm going to talk with her about it this is going to be mutual this is going to be an agreement she gave me these terms I will live by those terms and I like mentioning that she asked me to continue to be a daughter to her parents who like never knew that this woman was sick. That's interesting, especially because we've only seen Priscilla in the context of being around fury, being around other scrolls, the idea that she would just go visit two innocent, like human people (laughs) and just like bring them banana bread or like drive them to the optometrist or something. I, even if we don't see it, even if it doesn't mean (laughs) anything, I do. I just like the extra facet of Priscilla doing something that has nothing to do with any of this espionage. Yeah, yeah. That's like, no, I have to go mini golfing with my parents this weekend. <laughs> Sorry, I can't go on your super spy mission to. <laughs> Got to keep uh, up my cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I liked her a lot. I have a head canon of something that happens that I, I don't think it actually happened this way. Cause we, we do see her in that doctor's persona in that scene in 1998, when she hands fury, the mm-hmm. info on, um, I forget the dude's name, uh, but the, the Drake dude off? who, yes. Yeah. Um, when she hands him that, so that probably would have been like after that doctor died or just recently, like around that time, um or uh, who who knows exactly but we get that scene of them in 2012 just after the events of the first avengers film um and in my head canon that moment is not the the scroll in my head canon mm-hmm. that's her i know that that's not how it happened i'm saying it's my head canon because uh I, she has uh, the she makes mention of of like I, I went to this doctor. I had a conversation with her and essentially asked her if this yeah. would be OK. And mm. one of the things she also asked is like, would you like to fall in love? And we don't get oh. all of the details of what they talked about. Like, yeah, 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 no, with that. But I assume that she told this the doctor all about the man that nick fury was and how how righteous he is and how handsome he is and x y and z right and they like maybe she did at one point kind of be like i kind of want to meet him like who is this guy that Ah. you are are about to like live the rest of your life with 
as me, right? And mm-hmm. so in in my mind, I like to think that that was her g- g- getting to meet meet him, and that's when she introduces this poem of like, yeah, now that I've met you, I approve. I've lived m- my life. Mm. I get to be called beloved now. Um, but yeah, again, that's not I, exactly how it happened. I do, I do like the there. idea of in this it's show nice full of wondering if a human is secretly a scroll, that there is one scene where we presume somebody is a scroll, but they actually are just a normal human. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a nice thought, but it's not it. Mm-hmm. But that, 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 that encounter though is still emotionally impactful. Um, mm-hmm. Cause yeah, she has this, deep desire to just live a full life not one that's you know in hiding or on the run and that's kind of what that poem is saying um and then throughout the course of episode four when we see that uh the the scroll that's impersonating Rody is like well now we're ordering you to kill your husband kill F- fury uh they they have this conversation at their own home o- over tea be being like well yeah i've been told to kill you but also i told the doctor that uh, like who's uh, mm-hmm. p- whose persona I-, I took that i would never hurt you and so they recite this poem and they both shoot and just barely miss their their head and they're just like all right well never gonna see you again peace <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to please and mail like- me my clothes Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think Nick picked up his ring on the way out. Right. Um, I, yeah. It's it just like I really, really enjoyed those scenes. I thought it was very mm. emotional. Um, and in what I feel like almost should be a global event, right, that they are being invaded by these these scrolls. It really feels like the battles that they're fighting are smaller emotional. Yes. It's it's within their relationships and how their relationships have been invaded by time or Mm -hmm. distance or just changing philosophies, Um, which I I think is an interesting way to interpret it. Yeah. Good stuff there. Um other things to talk about uh big action set piece at the end of episode <laughs> four, four, four cars mm-hmm. crashing guns shooting explosions i liked it um i will say that it is one of the few scenes in in this show that you can tell like oh samuel L. Jack jackson's old <laughs> he's, he's moving real slow he's not the super spy he used to be mm-hmm. right um but it, it's it's it still works i i liked his immediate recognition of the guy that picked up talos is not the guy that he says he is he's like that's you're not uh uh-uh, uh-uh. yeah and it sucks because at the end talos dies Yes, That's this was a big surprise. Four. I, it's n- not a immediately. There are no apparent theories for the way out of this. I'm not saying this it's one impossible. Seems more final. It really does, which yes. is very sad because I think I I've always liked Talos. I think people in general have always liked Talos. Ben Mendelsohn's been giving a really charismatic performance. Suppose we'd see him in, in Some flashbacks charismatic interviews or... too about how how much the Fantastic Four suck. <laughs> 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 have, have, have you seen, seen that? I don't. That, I don't know anything. You don't tell me what is. He's which on one? some is this a, the... interview. I don't know who did, did get it, but there's a clip of him basically talking about how much he hates the Fantastic Four, but how much he loves Doctor Doom, and he's just like, yeah, and the Fantastic Four suck. <laughs> the Fantastic Four is characters, not any of these specific Fantastic Four films. He's like, I hate that stretchy guy. Just, yeah, the idea of the Fantastic Four, their old co- comics, he's like, they're boring. They suck. I, he's like, but they introduced the Scrolls and Doctor Doom and this, like, they did some amazing stuff, but them, they suck. And he just keeps saying it, like, the Fantastic Four suck. It's really f- funny. Speak <laughs> Speaking of the Fantastic Four, we read some of those initial 
issues from Marvel's first family the where first they encounter ten. scrolls. Yeah. And we see the scrolls transform into cows and like lose their memory, lose their awareness of themselves as scrolls. And then they just live as cows for I'd a long love time. I to see that happen at the end of this. Yes, I want to I do want to see if a scroll can even transform into a non-human entity. Can a scroll be a dog? A cow? Anything? I'm another I mean, alien? It I guess depends on yeah, how do you define human or stuff like that cuz he is able to mimic Groot. Yeah, exactly. Um, if he can be a tree, can you like I understand that they went for like we are bipedal humanoid creatures we can transform right. into bipedal humanoid creatures but like have you tried has graphic tried to like anamorph into a hawk yeah, right yeah <laughs> exactly exactly um yeah there's still there's still i'm not sure exactly where the status quo will be at the end of this. And I was thinking about it again because we mentioned, I think, in episode one, when we first got the shot of Rhodey right there with the president, we were like, but wait, mm. isn't Harrison Ford also cast as President Ross? So something must happen to this pr president that's, here. That's and our one thing that. we know we're going towards is something happening to President Ritson, which I hope we'll get to spend a little bit more time with him. I don't feel like we know him very well as as a person. Maybe we'll see yeah. him and Fury together in the next episode. I just if they're going to do something with him, I'd like to know him as a man and not just the figurehead of the president. You know? Yeah. Does he have kids? Where is he from? <laughs> so, I have one fact, please. How does he like his sandwiches cut? I'd love to know. Um, Because I was thinking about it, like, even when Fury was talking to Rhodes that first time they have the conversation, he is, is like, should we call in the Avengers? And he's like, no, absolutely not. I'm 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 wondering if that's kind of where the status quo will almost be left at at the end of this show is like it's on Earth. Yeah, we had the blip, but Thanos and the Avengers, they've they've kind of been this not otherworldly in in the sense that they are ethereal but this this mm. kind of far away presence yes they they randomly showed up in new york when we had this alien attack they fought in wakanda but we barely even knew wakanda existed long before you know not too long before that then they're fighting in space and on other planets mm. like it, it it seems kind of far away but with something like the scrolls here on earth and there's a million yeah. of them and they've been here for 30 years and on top of that we did have the blip uh we do have them trying to do this uh, other captain america and john walker we do have the emergence of mutants uh we do have mm. the, the more people with the emergence powers of that aren't, hand right there's this god like <laughs> more and more things are starting to be just like what the f it is happening. Um, and I, I I think if Ritson makes it out alive, I think it will be a like, I need to step down. We need to bring in someone that will be tougher on national, if not global security. Um, and that's what it's like, oh, General Ross, like that's who who we need here. Um, and yeah, it, I, I, I can see something like that happening but beyond that two episodes left i still don't know yeah. exactly where they're going um so we'll see I, yeah i you know i'm hoping for scroll cows this is my wish list scroll cows or just and to, to better understand the limits of what a scroll can and cannot transform into uh one fact about the president i don't even remember his first name Tell me one President Ritz, in fact, please. Sonia, I do. I think Sonia's really interesting. And bringing in Academy Award winner Olivia Coleman. Not that she, like the scene where she goes into the butcher shop and is a torture sequence. That's a pretty nice showcase. But there's yeah. got to be way more with that character to bring in that actor. Uh, I wish for these things. 
I would love to see her return in like Thunderbolts. Yeah. Something like that would be fantastic um, to see her in involved in that. Um, even in the next Captain America. Um, yeah. Right? I mean, we, she's, she's over there in England. Maybe she knows the Black Knight. Yeah, something who, who, who knows. I think also with uh, the new Captain America, the name of it now having been ch- changed to B- B- Brave New World, right? Or no, what's... Mm-hmm. Is, 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 yes. is that right? Yeah, it's just this idea of like a new status quo. Like yes. something, something is 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 happening. Um, that like the 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 world has changed. It's not what it used to be, and I feel like that would still be fairly accessible to people that have, generally speaking, kept up with the MCU, but maybe didn't watch Secret Invasion mm. or stuff. They, they know, like, oh yeah, people with superpowers, aliens, mm. like that's we've now seen that stuff. There's yes. a so there's something new here, a new status quo. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's all I have to say on episode three and four here. Um, mm-hmm. Good stuff. I, I, I liked these two as a whole episode three. But um, yeah, after these shows four. end, I rarely remember specific episodes. <laughs> they stick with me i'm still mad i that's the thing i don't want to bring down other shows when i'm like trying to lift up this one so i'm trying not Mm -hmm. to say the exact show i'm referring to but um when i when i'm like some shows just didn't stick the landing they had all the right ingredients uh, but if you which, go back and, which, yeah and that has listen, happened sure enough you times that you could be pointing a finger at any one of them yeah unfortunately yeah and i think a part um, of that is just the trick of you are one story that is within a larger story and i can imagine it's a struggle to end the the final episode of your show that is part of a much bigger franchise with bigger threads coming in and out of it yeah yeah absolutely uh, well, I say that wraps up uh, that about wraps us up for our sure, reaction yes. uh, to the secret invasion episode three and four uh, for more secret invasion action. We will be back in two weeks uh, as we talk about the penultimate and the finale uh, of secret invasion. Um, Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. There you go. Uh, You guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer. Uh, And if you would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. We are also on on threads as The Whatnots official. So go check us out there if you'd like. Uh, If you're watching this on YouTube, we have some more videos right over there. So please go like, share and subscribe. You guys know the deal with that. But yeah, this has been number 125 of The Whatnots Reactor Core. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.